Olympics are looking like now. Pre-Samba, we've given up all of those morning games, but all eyes were on that Nifty Bank uh, because it was just uh, kissing distance from that record high levels. If you look at the Nifty Bank right now, it is trading around uh, that record high levels. But yes, we are just all waiting for it to actually hit that level 300 points away from uh, those record high levels. If you look at Nifty and Sensex, they have actually moved away from the morning highs. Both of them drifting lower. You have uh, Nifty right now uh, uh, hovering around 18,120 mark. It is actually off about 130 points from the day's highest point. If you look at some of the sectoral gainers uh, in today's uh, trading session, let me take you through all the sectoral gainers uh, right now. You have the PSU Bank Index that is really marching ahead. And in PSU Bank Index in particular, take a look at what Bank of Baroda is doing. Take a look at what SBI are doing, is doing right now. So both of them are seeing very good gains right now as we speak. You have Metal Index that is holding on to some gains. You have Power Index, Auto Index that is holding on to gains of about half a percent. But uh, on the flip side, Pharma Index is the one that is actually seeing uh, the sharpest amount of decline. Seven tenths of percent downtick coming in for Nifty Pharma Index. You have IT Index that is seeing uh, declines of about two tenths of percent. Ditto coming in for Oil and Gas Index. So talking about the gainers today, Britannia. That's the one that's stolen all the limelight in trade today. 9% uptick coming in for Britannia. It has hit the record high levels intraday basis and this is on back of good set of earnings coming in from that particular counter. SBI is the other uh, sector, uh, nifty gainer. Apart from that, you have Adani Enterprises, Tata Steel, Aisha Motors that are holding on to gains. But uh, if you see the losing end, Asian Paints is down about 1.7%. You have Sipla that's down about 1.7% as well. Dr. Reddy is also down about 1.5% as we speak. So that's the way how the setup is looking like uh, this uh, Monday morning, Adaraj. No doubt we are all waiting for uh, that record high levels to come in for the Nifty Bank. But let's talk about what is happening with SBI. It's the second uh, top uh, gainer in today's trading session. Stellar set of earnings coming in for SBI. But what exactly worked for SBI in the quarter gone by? And what are the hits and the misses? Let me bring on board my colleague Harsh to talk about it. Harsh, over to you. Right, we'll quickly try and connect with Harsh since uh, minutes from now to figure out uh, what exactly worked for SBI. But as you can see, strong uh, loan growth coming in for that particular counter. You also had good uptick coming in on the profit front, a good uptick coming in on the NIF front also. And also the operating profit also saw a great uh, uptick for that particular counter. If you look at... Uh, uh, if you look at their uh, NPAs, uh, that's the one that saw a decline on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The provisions also came in much lower on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis as well. So that is SBI for you. But uh, let's bring on board our guests for today. We have Kunal Botra as well as Avinash Gorakshekar. And Kunal, I'll come first to you. Uh, very good morning to you. A very happy Monday as well. Happy Monday to you as well, Avinash. Uh, and Kunal, SBI... Yeah, it's a, I, I think it's, it is at a record high levels, isn't it? And marching much ahead of that. Uh, where do you see SBI headed from here on? And if you're already holding on to it, do you, does it make sense to stay put with that holding in SBI? Good morning, Cheryl. Uh, good morning, Adiraj, as well as uh, Navinash and everyone. So I would believe that uh, I think SBI at current levels of 620 approximately could be a good zone where uh, you know traders could if you're a very short term trader event trader then i think it makes sense to book out uh, you know some bit of profits over here but then largely what the stock has also done is broken out of a huge consolidation so on the charts you can see that the stock has come out of a major uh, you know 10 12 month of consolidation second half of 2021 is where the stock had entered into this broad range and it's managed to finally break out this broad range for uh, you know itself the recent trends have also led to into a strong resurgence if i can use that word for many of the PSU banking stocks in terms of stock prices, whether it's the large caps, mid caps, or even the smaller cap two digit names, which have done exceptionally well in this last you know, five, six months. So I would be of the belief that the momentum is extremely strong, but I think just from a short term play in event kind of a play, I think the best could be uh, already factored in for a stock like SPI. But traders who have a longer term time horizon, they can continue to hold on. Right. Many, many thanks, Kunal. A very good morning to you and coming to you also, Avinash. Very good morning, Adhiraj here. We just asked Kunal a question on the SBI. Coming to you now. Uh, now, SBI has posted some uh, strong, uh, very strongly during quarter two. Where is it headed from there? And do you think that there is more scope of outperforming from here on? Yeah, I think uh, good morning, Abhiraj.
uh my sense is see sbi has actually delivered a very strong outperformance uh both on the loan book front as well as you know on the asset quality side in fact the management is very hopeful that uh, you know the second half of fy23 should be equally stronger and i think credit growth continues to be extremely positive so you know you're going to see a lot of demand appetite getting uh, you know uh, you know serviced by the bank uh my sense is that one uh, if one takes a 12 to 15 month kind of time frame then a price uh, target of at least 700 plus looks possible because i think uh, as kunal mentioned you know uh, technically of course it's broken out of out of a very strong kind of uh, resistance zone of almost 450 to 500 my sense is now the market should be looking at what kind of commentary and what kind of numbers come in the third and the fourth quarter and in all likelihood you know with the kind of numbers most of the other banks have also presented like bank of baroda or for canara bank i would believe that you know the psu banking space was a fairly neglected sector Uh, we could see a lot of outperformance and especially from sbi which is the market leader in the psu space so i think anybody holding it should continue to hold on and any dips around 610 or 600 or uh, rupees could be a good opportunity to accumulate this stock further avinash kunal stay with us as we stepping into a short break but don't go anywhere after we come back we come back with the queries and the rapid fire Powered by. At the end of the day, you don't want the frauds. You want to skim the foam. And get your caffeine kick in a way that it hits that sweet spot. Yeah, just like a good cup of coffee. A real story with all the right elements that connects all the dots does not come in an instant. I'm Vikram Mosa. Join me on ET Now. Start your trading day with non-stop updates and uninterrupted trading ideas to power up your portfolio with unmatched experience and analysis from our market experts. In the market, right here, ET now. We are trying to make us compact. With the smart chart, can check it up more than four hundred points. Management is now with us. Is it overvaluation case? See that seventeen case. Watch the opening show from eight a.m. to ten a.m. ET now, break free. When you are India's most experienced market anchor, you don't just ask the right questions; you make statements. With each passing day, this market is becoming better, and with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. If the normalisation in the world will happen, demand, which in a sense got destroyed, will automatically make a comeback. When you believe in India's growth story, you will be known for your acumen. The long haul FII who looks at India as still a promised land for an consumption and for a growth revival destination, that pretty much is in the game. This crisis has surprised, I would say, delighted, and has given birth to a new cult culture, both locally and globally. Nikunj Dalmia, only on ET Now. Hello and welcome. You're watching Markets at Noon. Midway through the trading day, we help you catch all the trading action and get the bigger picture of the equity markets. We help you screen through all the clutter and get you research insights. Master the market sentiment during the most active trading hour of the day. Get exceptional winning strategies from our technical analysts as well as expert views coming in from the market makers. Catch markets at noon every trading day only on ET Now.
Rakit Junwala wants to go easy on trading. He does not want to trade as aggressively as he did. Let's say couple. But I always used to. I have felt <laughs> that for the last 25 years. कि क्या करो अभी छोड़ दो trading में वो छुट्टी. Once a trader, always a trader. Rakit Junwala is a very quick decision maker. Some of our common friends tell me that you take a decision to invest millions in ten minutes. You don't take hours. You take minutes. How does it work? You got to catch the vital points. And second thing, remember you. You know, I want analysis paralysis. You are investing in a future which is uncertain. You cannot predict it beyond a point. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now, and yes, uh, uh, inching towards the record high levels for the benchmark indice. But uh, yes, in case there's a volatility, what should you do? Let's ask Avinash exactly that. And Avinash, retail investors uh, tend to get very jittery. Actually, not only retail investors, investors in general also get uh, pretty uh, jittery when uh, you have uh, volatile moves in the markets. In such scenarios, what should they do, and what should they keep in mind in order to protect their wealth? So I think uh, first of all, uh, Kerala. I think you need to take. It's going to continue, uh, but in the very near term, I think uh, investors should first focus on the fact that they should largely adopt a buy and hold strategy. Uh, stock prices go up very fast; they come down also equally fast. But I think if the intention is medium to longer term, then I think uh, wealth creation is very much possible. And keep a time frame of at least two to three years. I think retail investors uh, who do SIPs also should take a three to four year kind of time frame, so that you know whatever they invest in the markets, especially in the, most of the large caps as well as quality mid caps, they should actually generate a lot of wealth. The key essence is remaining uh, invested in the market for the long term. Right, so that's the take coming in on what should retail investors do in such market scenario. Must look to invest over the longer term time frame and uh, in quality stocks as always. But uh, let's take a look at what India Cement is doing right now and why am I marking India Cement? Because just minutes from now, ago, it just reported its uh, quarter two earnings, and if you look at the consolidated numbers, it's posted a loss of around 113 crore rupees versus a profit of around 30 crore rupees on a year-on-year basis. If you look at uh, the revenues, also uh, revenues is coming at around one. 1,327 crore rupees versus 1,235 crore rupees, and that is India Cement for you right now. Seeing that earnings reaction on that particular counter saw a dip from the day's highest point, trying to recover a tad bit as we speak. And PSU Bank Index, that's the one that has stolen the show in uh, today's trading session. Not only today's trading session, of uh, the past few weeks, we've seen stellar rally in the PSU Bank Index. And today, you have two stocks that are standing out. One is Bank of Baroda, and the other one is SBI. We did take a view from both of our Experts on where they see SBI headed, but let's bring on board Harsh to tell us what exactly has worked for SBI in the quarter gone by. Harsh, a very good morning to you, and over to you. Yes, good morning, Cheryl. In fact, SBI really has hit it out of the park this time on pretty much all metrics. We're looking at very strong underlying loan growth, which is really aiding profitability. The net interest income has gone up 13 percent. Of course, on a you know on SBI's base, that's quite impressive. And you're looking at a 20 percent loan growth on SBI's base of 26 lakh crore. Mind you, the largest bank in the country. Uh, just to give perspective, between FY18 to FY22, really, uh, SBI's compounded loan growth has been roughly uh, 9 percent. Really, not so impressive. Single digit. Uh, currently, just gives perspective. 
that the 20% loan growth is extremely solid. Loan growth is coming from OMCs, BFSI and IT. Uh, the other piece, of course, is what's aiding NIMS is the fact that uh, you know, your, uh, there's, there's a change in the rate cycle that's happened. 70% plus of SBI's loans are floating rate loans, which is aiding net interest income as well as NIMS, and will continue to do so going forward as well. So two-thirds of your loans being floating rate, uh, they will keep getting readjusted as the RBI adjusts the repo going forward. So uh, that's leading to a stronger operating profit. Your treasury losses, which were there in Q1, have not come through this time. So we've seen bond yields go up from that 6% mark, the 10-year India bond yield, to around 7.4, 7.5%. And that's where it's at even in this particular quarter. So really, treasury losses have been minimal, or there has been absolutely no impact of treasury, which is further aiding profitability. Lower provisioning is the other piece that's really aiding the pie. What you're seeing is we were expecting or penciling in provisions of 7,000 crore in this quarter. It, that, that number has come in at 3,000 crore. Translating to a 4,000 crore in profit before tax and 3,000 crore in profit after tax. So really all of these factors aiding SBI's bottom line and ROAs and profitability, which is thereby aiding it to grow also faster with more confidence. Of course, a well-provided book, net NPS below 1%, not seen that over 10 years plus now. Uh, so really all of those factors aiding the confidence at SBI. Many thanks, Harsh, for that perspective coming in on SBI. But with that, we now shift focus to our query segment. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and WhatsApp. The numbers flashing on your screens right now. We've got Kunal and Avinash. So let's kick, kick start the query segment. I'll start my first question. Uh, Kunal, this one's for you. Maina is writing to us, and she's asking about Zomato shares. She's asking, when will be a good time to book profits and move? So I think if you're a long-term uh, investor, then I think you should continue to hold on to the stock because this this recent up move the stock had seen uh, you know a few months back from 40 odd rupees to 60 plus has upped the base for Zomato. Uh, it's not led into a big follow-through price action, but then you know when a stock which is uh, you know highly tracked and anticipated to give a big breakout, you could probably expect that the stock would get into a zones of. Uh, uh, you know, consolidation quite a lot more as compared to any other normal stock. So I think in that regards, uh, it's a stock which would probably take a, some bit of more time to come out of this, uh, you know, big breakout band. But I think, uh, you know, the trajectory, the recent recovery from the 40-odd levels indicates that the stock could be on course of a bigger up move from current levels. So if you're not in a, any kind of a hurry, and if you've bought at lower levels, and if you're willing to hold on for some more time, then I think you should hold on to Zomato. I would probably expect maybe a 75 to 80 kind of a target range for the stock, possibly in the next six months to nine months or slightly more. All right, let me take my next query. Then this one is coming from Akash Matthew, and he wants to know if MTAR and Solar Industries are a good buy for the longer term, and he wants to know which of them, both of them, are a better bet in the uh, in the long term time frame. Avinash, and also he wants to know if not these two, are there any other defense stock that you would recommend? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the selection between solar and M MTR technologies, I would believe that solar technologies is a better choice. Uh, the company is a very large explosive supplier to coal India and now has also uh, been a very large supplier in the defense category space. So I think, you know, if you're go taking a longer term view, I think solar industry definitely deserves an inclusion in the portfolio if the time frame is at least, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months. Uh, other defense stocks which look pretty interesting, you know, from the shipping space is Cochin Shipyard and typically, you know, companies like Bharat Dynamics. So I think, you know, defense being a very uh, talked about sector and where the growth visibility is extremely strong, Cheryl, I think uh, one can definitely use any market declines to accumulate these stocks, you know, because the stocks uh, which I mentioned across the board have shot up. So obviously buying on declines would make a better. Right. I mean, I was coming to you now. Sandeep is writing to us from... Uh, Tirupur in Tamil Nadu. He is looking to invest in the chemical sector and he's asking what stocks look attractive for a two to three year horizon. Yeah, I think uh, from the chemical space, uh, Abhiraj, I think, you know, stocks like Gujarat Chlorochemicals. Uh, typically, I would believe that this is one company which is going to significantly benefit, you know, not only uh, from the fluorochemical space, uh, but they are a large. In India, 
and i think in terms of the financial numbers quarter 2 was also very solid uh, the management commentary has also been very strong so i think uh, you know if one were to look at uh, investing in the chemical space this is one stock where visibility is strong and where i think feel that in the next say 12 to 18 months uh, at least a 20 to 25% upside looks possible actually avinash no we'll try to uh, reconnect with you we uh, we've got you on a bit of a patchy line so while we reconnect to you let me take uh, the next uh, few queries uh, to kunal and kunal uh, naman is asking about go fashion okay he's purchased it at the price of around 690 rupees per share i know it's a recently listed counter but he wants some target price and also he wants to know if he should look to continue to hold on to this or should he look to book profits on uh, go fashions Actually, uh, you, you should have, uh, or rather, you. Uh, it's good that you've uh, held on to the stock uh, from those 695 odd levels. Uh, but I think at current levels of 1347, there's just one, uh, uh, I would say, concern which has emerged into the stock price charts, and that's uh, a mild breakdown on the RSI. For the first time, the stock has confirmed a breakdown, and this comes after almost five, six months. Prior to that, uh, you know, the stock had seen, seen such a kind of a similar breakdown, but then the stock managed to show signs of recovery quite quickly. So, what ideally you should do in this case is have a, a, a broader stop loss. So, I think closer to maybe a 1300 or 1280 could be a, a stop loss for this trade on Go Fashion. Assuming if the stock breaks below that level, is where I believe you should look to uh, you know book your entire profits. But till the time it doesn't break below the 1280 mark, I think you should continue to hold on. Right. Good morning, coming to you, Sandeep Kumar, writing to us from Tamil Nadu. Uh, good morning to all the experts, viewers. Holding Tata Steel, 108.50. He's asking if there's any better metal name other than Tata Steel, or should he hold on to this himself? Time frame that he's given is six months. So I think most of the metal stocks they tend to move in tandem. Now, uh, you know, when you look at it from a more longer term basis, of course, Tata Steel has given uh, you know strong returns, but then it's very difficult to pick and choose. uh you know a stock which has a very similar kind of a or rather you know a stock which has uh, you know uh, done much better than tata steel so i think in that regards maybe a jsw steel jindal steel hindalco they tend to move in tandem with respect to the price movement of tata steel but it's just that uh, you know when i look at it from long term play and i look at the risk reward then i think something like sale is uh, looking very attractive i think at 84 85 or just about 85 86 levels for sale currently i think it's a stock which you can look to consider uh, you know because i believe that the stock has been a big underperformer the long term indicators are showing signs of reversal if that's the case and if that happens for sale then we could be looking at a big breakout for the stock uh, but as i said that most of the metal stocks they move in tandem so it's not as if the other still would underperform but then give more or less similar returns over there sale could be another stock which you can look to add from the metal pack okay uh let me just see if we've connected with avinash avinash I, uh, yes okay we have avinash back then avinash this one is coming from nino and you would want to know what is the long term uh, perspective on coromandel international especially after its earnings i think we've lost his feed then okay kunal then i'll come to you instead uh, this one is from manish raju he has 500 shares of ab capital that is purchased at 124 And hundred shares of RCTC at seven hundred thirty-four rupees per share. He wants to know whether he can um, accumulate more in both of these stocks for the short term, or any uh, levels or such that he can track for both of these stocks. But I would request you to keep either to AB Capital or RCTC. So you can uh, idly, uh, uh, you know, hold on to both. But my only concern is that don't keep it short term because. i would be of the belief that both these stocks are on the verge of a big breakout and a big reversal for themselves so ab capital specifically if you are looking to buy would be a, a if you are looking to ask just one out of the two names then i would prefer ab capital because of the way financials uh, financial sector has uh, you know panned out and the intensity of breakout in the in entire financial space uh, and possibility that ab capital can cover up a big underperformance so that's the stock which i would prefer out of the two but ideally you should hold on to both of the stocks right kunal coming to you uh, professor thomas is writing to us from cochin eki energy is a stock he's asking whether it's a good long term bet at the current market price uh so i think eki energy is uh, something which i is is a bit more illiquid i think at 43000 50000 odd shares or an or an average tr uh, trading volume as such uh trading below the 200 dma uh the 200 dma said i think 1900 or 1920 mark for uh, ek ekai energy so i think it's a stock which i would not recommend to hold on as such so if you're looking to uh, uh if you've already bought the stock uh, i would suggest to exit the stock on any kind of a major rally 
Okay, this one is also for you, Kunal. I know you're going to go on a marathon spree right now, but we are trying to reconnect with Avinash as of now. So uh, let me take this next one to you. And I've got this from Vivek Avilani. And uh, this one is specifically for you, Kunal. He's saying that you had recommended to exit just as. So now he's saying, what is the strategy that he can use to exit? His cost price is 900 rupees. It's, uh, he's been holding it for over a year. Are you seeing any scope of up move in just as? See, the only concern is uh, inconsistency of rise uh, in stocks like Justile. So there is a phase when, uh, you know, the market likes more high beta stocks than the mid cap names. And that's a phase where you can make 15%, 20% kind of an return into these kind of names in a very quick kind of a time. But otherwise, if you hold on to the stock for, uh, uh, you know, such kind of a similar return, then the time period is more long term. So I think that's what you need to judge. Uh, if you're in from a long term play, then maybe holding the stock is a different game altogether. But Purely in terms of timing, purely in terms of momentum, I would be of the belief that uh, you know you should look to exit the stock. Maybe rallies towards 700 could be a good point to exit just dial. And if you're looking to uh, you know chip into some other sector, then I think something, for example, like the financials, like what we discussed for AB Capital, that's a phenomenal stock which I believe is heading towards a big breakout. Uh, that's that potentially that stock looks very attractive. Even something uh, you know like Biocon, for example, over the last couple of days I've been highlighting looks very attractive from a momentum play. So you can switch on to either of these. Teams. Right. Stay with us, Kunal. We're slipping into a very short break, but viewers, keep getting them queries going because once we come back, we'll address the rest of them. We've also got rapid fire. that instills trust. My experience, based on what I've done in the last 20 years, these are the times where you don't panic and if you stay committed to your financial planning, you'll be rewarded. The bulls are saying, look, this is markets which are telling you that the future will be much brighter than what the past was. The voice that commands respect. You could remember that every bull market is higher than the last one. The voice that is always ahead of the curve. Maybe later this summer, uh, I'll buy more gold and silver. Domestic is already at 60% capacity and going towards 80%. But we need more growth in international. The voice that does not falter. How do you convert this crisis into an opportunity? We will become stronger. We will survive this storm. With each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. Catch India's most experienced market anchor, Nikunj Dalmia, only on ET Now. The rupee depreciation is only helping further that the seller of that commodity in India benefits. Speculation is as old as the hill. We started off the correction with uh, the scare of interest rates rising. I don't think the sanction go away within a couple of weeks. They will stay for some more time. For anybody who has a three years time frame, I think next six months would give good entry points. I think from a medium to long term perspective, I think uh, we should still be fine from even from here. Now things are exactly as what you had shared with us. We are staring at India like never before. Absolutely. And people are not realizing it, I wish every Indian felt that. But time is the nastic of spastic manbana samay banana. For an SIP investor, Next two, three years, is there a probability and a possibility of a double digit return? And all the difficult to predict, return will be more than 10 times.
Hey, Nikunj, you are a very seasoned uh, uh, market observer and therefore you may hit the nail on the head. I think you have always uh, kept the focus on the retail investor and I think it's again a very apt, very good question. Nikunj, first of all, thank you so much. You are one person I've always enjoyed interacting uh, throughout the last 15-20 years. You know, the problem on coming on your channel is that you already know everything. I just heard your... Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. We have our experts today, Kunal Botra as well as Avinash or Gorak Shekhar. But we are just trying to connect uh, to Avinash. He's there. So before I lose your line once again, Avinash, let me ask Nino's query to you, which I asked last time on Coromandel International. He wants to know what's the long-term perspective on this counter, especially after the earnings. No, I think uh, Coromandel has shown a strong trajectory in quarter two. And I think uh, over the next six months, Cheryl, we could expect further traction. In fact, uh, you know, Coromandel is not a pure uh, fertilizer company. It's a, you know, chemical company which has got various uh, value-added products in its product portfolio. So I think, you know, if the investor has already purchased this stock, I think he should hold on. Uh, there has been some profit booking post the quarter two numbers, but fundamentals seem to be very strong. And I would not be surprised that over the next 10 to 15 months, one could expect at least a 15 to 20 percent upside, even from the current odd level. So continue to hold on. And uh, there's no need to hurry out and book out uh, profits as of now. You could expect better price uh, upside in the next, say, 12 to 15 months. Welcome back, Avinash. Aarti is writing to us. Uh... She has 50% of holdings in Kotak Bank and CDSL and she wants to buy TVS Motors or Vijay Di Diagnostics for a one-year time frame. She's asking for your advice. Uh, I think, uh, Abhiraj, uh, as far as TVS Motors is concerned, you know, the stock has moved up quite significantly. Uh, as far as Kotak Bank is concerned, I would believe that this is one bank which is uh, a promising candidate, uh, has got a very decent kind of asset quality kind of benchmark. Uh, plus a very decent kind of loan book growth. And with the kind of credit growth we are witnessing, Kotak Bank definitely qualifies as a good medium to long-term bet. Uh, it has slightly underperformed both ICIC and Axis Bank, but I would believe that you know, if the time frame is slightly longer term, then Kotak Bank on any decline could definitely be a good inclusion. As far as Vijaya Diagnostic is concerned, I would uh, prefer to be a little cautious here because the diagnostic space uh, is extremely competitive. Uh, I would not uh, like to invest at current odd levels and I think uh, it's better to wait for at least another one or two quarters before one takes a call here. I'll give you a breather then Avinash and Kunal, this one is for you. Jay Krishna is writing to us from Kerala. He has Shobha, uh, Shobha at 757 rupees per share. For the medium term, he wants to know whether he should come to hold on to it, sell or look to average and if average then he wants a level for it. So you can continue to hold on. Uh, averaging opportunity, I would believe, uh, you know, could be around the 600 mark for Sobha. So maybe, so maybe 600 or 605 could be a range which you can record for. I think the stock seems to be having some good retracement supports at those levels. Uh, so you can hold on to the stock. It's just going into a very shallow kind of a correction slash consolidation. So nothing major, at least on the charts, which is uh, you know, showing quite negative for the stock, at least over the near term. Right. Kunal Diksha Mehta is writing, Mehra is writing from Gurgaon. Purchase 190 shares of Airtel at 628 per share. She asks, she needs your opinion on whether she should book profits and invest the same in IDFC Bank. See, I think it could be a good prospect, uh, you know, that uh, first of all, you've made very good money in, uh, in Bharti Airtel. So I think at current levels, it makes a lot of sense to book out profits over here. And one of the other reasons for you know, suggesting that is because Bharti Airtel has this tendency of going into a rally of for a few months and then a multi-month consolidation. So we could be very much uh, you know, in this zone of consolidation for Bharti Airtel and would then make a lot of sense to switch towards uh, maybe a, you know, a moderate beta stock to a high beta name, something like IDFC First Bank, which you highlighted. So I think it could be a good strategy. Right. This one is coming in uh, from Anil uh, and uh, he's asking for BLS International Avinash. He already holds some shares, about 700 shares at a price of 300 rupees per share. He wants to know fundamentally, is it a good counter to hold on to for the longer term? 
Yeah, I think bonus uh, can be held on considering the fact that you know now post COVID travel activity has started off and the BLS is the very large vendor for visa processing services you know for more than 160 odd countries so definitely i think you know as travel gains momentum hospitality uh, you know business grows definitely as a fallout uh, bls is definitely going to do better we expect that fy23 should be a lot better in fact uh, even after giving bonus we expect that you know earnings growth could be comfortably be about 17 18% so i think continue to hold on i think better you know prospects are uh, likely to uh, materialize over the next say couple of years Right. Mandakini is writing to us from Kerala. Uh, this one's for you, Kunal. She's bought a lot of Hindalco and she wants to shift to Manalapuram. So she's asking if it's a good time to do so. Well, I'm not sure what's the reason for, uh, you know, to switch from, from, the, from that stock towards Manalapuram because they are completely different, uh, you know, sectors as well as completely different category of stocks. Hindalco is a stock which is far more stable and stronger as compared to a stock like Manapuram, which is still going to a recovery phase. It's still not recovered as much as compared to the uh, other peer like Muthut Finance. And Manapuram has been a very high beta stock in that regard. So, not sure of the reason of the exact reason why you would want to switch. But from my side, I would suggest not to make that switch. Right. This next one that I have is coming in from Satya and Biocon. He wants an entry price for investment. Fundamentally, if it's a good choice or no, is what he's asking. Also, if it is a good one, then he's asking for stop loss. Do you think you can help with this one by any chance, Avinash, on Biocon? What sort of an entry level can uh, can Satya look for it? And is it a good stock to buy fundamentally in the pharma pack? See, I think clearly uh, Biocon has been one of the underperformers in the pharma pack. But I think if you look at the numbers of Sinjin, which is one of the subsidiaries of Biocon, they've done exceedingly well. And I think the commentary also coming in from the Sinjin management has been quite positive. So I believe that, you know, on a standalone basis, Biocon could face some headwinds at least for the next couple of quarters. But the current price looks pretty attractive. I think if one were to look at the next, say, 12 to 18 months, uh, the standalone business would also take off. And I think Sinjin on its own also would contribute significantly. And since it's a subsidiary, it would definitely add value to the consolidated entity. So I think definitely one can look at buying this, but keep a time frame of at least 12, 18 months. Uh, definitely one of those stocks where one could get a decent upside uh, over the medium to long term. Uh, Samit is writing to us from Noida. Please advise on IEX purchase at 188 and time horizon for one year is his question. Is this question for me? Right. Yes. Uh, Abhiraj, I think uh, uh, just recently uh, the management of IEX has said that volumes have again taken off for IEX and they do expect competition to remain only in the near term. Although FY23 is not going to be a great year because they have mentioned that volumes are going to be flat as compared to last year. Our sense is that you know the gas business, which uh, the gas exchange which IEX has started, is going to also throw open a lot of business opportunity. So I think keep a time frame of at least a year, year and a half, because you know obviously uh, since two more exchanges have entered the power trading market, competition has increased. But longer term, I think you would definitely not only recover your price, but you could even de make a decent upside. So I think continue to hold on. That would be the advice. This next one that I have is coming in uh, from um, Dheeraj, and Dheeraj wants to know about Indigo Paints. Uh, he wants to know why did the share price go up and break immediately? What's your take on this one, Kunal? Well, I'm not sure why the stock went up because uh, I think it was some sort of a news flow which had come back into Indigo Paints. But, you know, uh, I think even on that day, I remember clearly that I'd maintained the stance that you know, for such kind of a stock which moves up significantly higher when there is no uh, inkling in terms of prices, in terms of change in volumes, then you should ideally wait for follow through price action. Now, I'll give you a distinct, uh, you know, stock, different sector, different stock, like Amaraja Battery. The stock had also, uh, you know, risen up sharply on the same day, if I'm not wrong. But then that stock had seen a follow through price action. And I think it's moved up higher by more than 5% to 8% uh, further from those levels. So, you know, you should ideally look out for such kind of a strong follow through price section because that generally indicates that the, the strength of the bulls or the comeback of the bulls is more strong and more sustainable. So Indigo Paints, I'm not sure the reasons, uh, you know, but I would believe that till the time the stock doesn't break past about the 1700 mark, you should ideally avoid the stock. Right. Uh, Kunal, RK Ahuja is writing to us. He's asking which two out of the three stocks are good for a long term. Adani Greens, Escorts, Mazgao Docs. I'm so sorry. I'll ask Avinash to take this question. My apologies, Kunal. Avinash, RK Ahuja is writing to us. He's asking 
two out of three stocks good for long term between Adani Green, Escorts and Mazgaon Docks? I think uh, Mazga Docks definitely looks interesting, although the stock has, uh, you know, risen quite sharply. Uh, my sense is any dip, uh, if one were to get, then definitely Mazga Docks seems to be a very good uh, deep kind of investment opportunity. Uh, the company is sitting on an order book of almost four and a half thousand crores. And defense is one space where I believe, you know, outperformance could continue for a very long time because order book visibility is strong and the government's for the next one is coming in from Sagar, wants a technical view on Britannia. He's bought 10 lots in the future at 3800 on Friday as there was a small breakout in 30 minutes. But he never anticipated that on Monday he will get 10% return. Maybe it's luck by chance is what he's saying, Kunal. But uh, he's asking, that, are you seeing any bigger targets or it's better to book out all the profits? I think it's good to book out profits because uh, on events like these, when the stock moves up higher, uh, and you know you see such kind of an exaggerated move for stocks it makes a lot of sense to book out maybe book out maybe five lots or 50 percent of your uh, quantity at current levels and then trail your stop loss to maybe a 4100 or 120 for britannia right zenza tech is uh, the stock sandeep is writing to us from punjab kunal this one's for you 100 shares of zenza tech what should you do book losses hold I would suggest to uh, you know avo avoid adding the stock at least at current levels. You may consider to book losses, but then a better prospect in terms of the same sector or similar sector would be large cap IT names, uh, which I think uh, I've been highlighting time and again. So it makes sense to shift towards maybe Infosys, Tech Mahindra or HCL Tech in that regards. Okay, this one is coming from Jayashree. What is the one to two year outlook on Avas financiers uh, can accumulate at current market price? What's your take on this one? Uh, Avinash, do you think Avas financiers is a safer bet to, to make right now? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, from the MBFC space, especially on the housing finance and small ticket loans, I think Avas financials can definitely be accumulated, provided, you know, investor has a one to two year view. Uh, the numbers, you know, which have come out have also been quite strong and the management commentary has also been quite upbeat, Cheryl. So, uh, what, if one were to take a longer term view, definitely worthwhile accumulating at the current level. Right. Avinash, Vinay from Bombay, he's asking whether Exite is a good buy at current levels. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, commodity prices have, uh, you know, softened and that is going to be uh, definitely beneficial for companies like Exide. More importantly, uh, they have a large presence in, uh, you know, emerging sectors like telecom, railways, automobiles. And I think the all these sectors have now started performing quite well. So definitely from a medium to long term horizon, I think Exide definitely qualifies as a good, decent bet. Uh, keep a time frame of at least 12 to 18 months. Neha Toteja is writing to us, holding Sun Pharma at a price of 811 rupees per share. Should I book profits now or keep holding? And what sort of targets can I expect in the near term? And the near term for her, Kunal, is three to six months. I think you should book out profits over here for Sun Pharma. And one of the reasons for that is the stock uh, taking a pause or a resistance at this current level of 1050 approximately. So over the last five uh, five or six days, five or six trading sessions, the stock has been trying to trying to break past about the 1050 mark, but it's unable to do that. Momentum oscillators are showing signs of a fatigue for uh, a stock like Sun Pharma in terms of prices. That indicates that you may see a, a possible consolidation or a correction from current levels. So if you bought at 800 odd levels, good time to book out profits. Right. Avinash, coming to you. Vivek is writing to us. Uh, he's asked, the stock is Timkin. He's holding 100 shares at 2,900. He's saying there's a sm small loss has been made. He's also asking, can he hold for 6 to 12 months? He wants a fundamental view. Yeah, I think uh, he can hold on to Timken. See, I think uh, the entire uh, automotive bearing space has been buzzing with activity. And I think uh, looking at the kind of strong tailwinds from the automobile sector, uh, my sense is that, you know, you could see very strong numbers coming from all the companies, including Timken. So I think uh, please don't get worried on the shorter term kind of uh, time frame. But if one were to take uh, the next 12 to 15 months, I think definitely he can get a decent risk reward. So continue to hold on. Okay, uh, the next query is uh, coming in from uh, Basva Raja. And also, uh, Dheeraj, I did not miss your query. I have asked it, so you can go back and uh, check it out. But this one is from Basav Raja. He wants about Thyroke 300 shares, which is uh, bought at an average price of 768 rupees per share. Now he's making losses. He wants to know whether it's the right time to average or should he exit with a loss, Kunal? What's your take on uh, Thyroke 
See, you can continue to hold on. I would not suggest an average at current levels. It's just that the last five, six months, the stock has stopped falling. And the fall uh, apparently has been quite vicious for Thyrocare from 1450 last year somewhere. The stock had fallen to almost at 620, 630 marks. So this fall has been quite vicious. It's said that the stock is consolidating over here. So you may get back your cost price possibly in the next uh, you know, one to three months. If that happens, then I think it's a good time to where you can look to exit. All right, so that's the take coming in on Thyrocare. But on that note, we'll actually slip into a break on this edition of uh, Buy Now, Sell Now. We have a lot of our viewers actually standing by. So, Amarji, don't worry. When we come back from the break, we will be answering your queries. So, stay tuned. We will continue with the queries after this break. Um, introduction and what can anybody add to that it's not always about buy sell or profit loss so after a gap down start there is no buying it's about making you market ready with insights from the foremost market anchors stocks open sharp the nifty higher, bank index is down momentum. Momentum. it's in fact coming to the market and the views from top notch technical analysts Join them talking business, markets and earnings every trading day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. only on ET Now. It's a daily grind that gets me going. Beating myself over the details. The tiny bits, the nuggets you tuck away. Somewhere you spot smoke and you look for the fire. At the end of the day, you don't want the froth. You want to skim the foam. And get your caffeine kick in a way that it hits that sweet spot. Yeah, just like a good cup of coffee. A real story with all the right elements that connects all the dots does not come in an instant. I'm Vikramoza. Join me on ET Now. Start your trading day with non-stop updates and uninterrupted trading ideas to power up your portfolio with unmatched experience and analysis from our market experts. In the market, right here on ET Now. We are trying to make a comeback. With the smart start. Tenchex is up more than 400 points. Management is now with us. Is it overvaluation case? See that 17 case. Watch the opening show from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. ET now, break free. When you are India's most experienced market anchor, you don't just ask the right questions, you make statements. With each passing day, this market is becoming better. And with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. If the normalization in the world will happen, demand which in a sense got destroyed will automatically make a comeback. When you believe in India's growth story, you will be known for your acumen. The long haul FII who looks at India as still a promised land for a consumption and for a growth revival destination, that pretty much is in the game. This crisis has surprised, I would say delighted and has given birth to a new cult culture, both locally and globally. Nikunj Dalmia, only on ET Now. Hello and welcome, you're watching Markets at Noon. Midway through the trading day, we help you catch all the trading action. And get the bigger picture of the equity markets. We help you screen through all the clutter and get you research insights. Master the market sentiment during the most active trading hour of the day. Get exceptional winning strategies from our technical analysts as well as expert views coming in from the market makers. Catch Markets at Noon every trading day only on ET Now.
Welcome now, uh, welcome back. Oh, you're watching Why Now Sell Now on ET Now. Uh, the next query that I have is uh, coming in uh, from uh, from Amarjeet. He has 300 shares of Graphite India purchased at 750 rupees per share. He wants to know whether he should continue to hold or look to average Kunal. I think you can continue to hold on. You can also look to average at current levels. I understand it's a very high beta name. I, I think you also understand that it's a very high beta stock, very high volatile. But it's just that in the last uh, you know, two months, specifically from the September lows, the stock had protected the 350 mark for itself. Two days of strong momentum and it's back towards 365, 370 for itself. So which could probably be an indication that the 350 is a good base. So you can look to add uh, you know, closer to that kind of a support level. Right. Kunal, this one's for you. Vijay is writing to us, stock is DMART, 4,200 price at 100 shares. He's asking what should he do, reduce or should he hold for six months? See, you can hold on to the stock, but uh, I would not be extremely bullish on the stock, at least over the very near term, because by near term, I mean at least for the next one to three months. My sense is that the stock should consolidate a bit more from current level. So I would suggest that you can hold on to the stock, but then uh, don't add too much. Your stop loss for this trade, which I would recommend, would be just about the 4,000 mark for DMA. Okay, Vimla George is asking about Shilpa Medicare and Kaplan Point for a one-year period. How are these counters looking like, Kunal, to you? So I think out of the two, uh, I would believe Kaplan Point, uh, Shilpa Medicare, of course, is the stock which has been down and out. I think it's all, already at a 52-week low or more than that uh, you know, over the last few days, and in fact, even at current levels. So not something which is very attractive. Uh, Kaplan Point, on the other hand, is still showing sem semblance of stability at uh, you know, levels of 740, 750 where it's trading right now. So if you are asking for a bet uh, out of the two names, I would go for Kaplan Point. Right. Kunal, this one's for you again. Punjab and Sindh Bank, 18 levels at 3,000 shares. Once a view by short term. This is Punita writing to us. So I'm not sure. I don't track the stock that often, but I think if you've uh, already made good money and assuming the stock is above the 18 mark or your cost price, I think it's a good time to book out profits over here. Okay, this one is written from uh, Sujit. He's writing to us from Jalgaon. Avinash, I'll take this question to you. Phenotex Chemicals is the uh, stock that he's bought at the price of around 50 rupees per share. Now he wants to know whether he should continue to hold on to it or look to exit this particular counter. See, I think uh, what the two numbers, Cheryl, have been pretty solid. And I think this is now a very good uh, institutional favorite stock also. A lot of HNI activity has also been seen. So I think since his cost price is extremely low, I think some part uh, of, you know, of his holding he can book out. But the rest, I think he should hold on. Prospects for the next 12 to 15 months are pretty solid. And I think earnings growth would continue to be so, you know, quite strong. So I think he can part book profit and continue to hold on to the rest of the shares. Right. Kunal, this one's for you. Uh, Ravi Teja is writing to us from Hyderabad. He's asking when is a good time to enter Varun Beverages. Looking for a short-term profit about 5-10%. I think you should look to, uh, you know, wait or uh, uh, not not buy the stock at current levels because I, for one, believe that it's showing signs of uh, a bit more topping out formations on the daily time frame. Yes, it's done reasonably well, but the recent rally which the stock has shown from, uh, you know, 975 or 1000 levels to 1200, I think seems to be on the back of lesser momentum uh, as well as a smaller degree of change in RSI. That indicates that maybe the stock could correct back uh, you know, to the 1000 odd mark. I would suggest to avoid buying the stock at current levels. Okay, this is coming from Satya Prakash. She wants to know in the short term, uh, what should he do with KPIT tech? Does it make sense to hold on to it? I'm actually unsure if he's actually uh, bought into KPIT tech. But in the short term, how are the charts looking for this one, Kunal? I think you should look to book out profits over here. The stock has done reasonably well and now I believe it could go into a bit of a correction slash consolidation. So I think if you've already made good money and assuming you've bought at over levels, you should look to book out. All right, this next one is for you, Avinash. This one is coming in from, um, okay, I think this one is from Godfrey. Yeah, this is from Godfrey D'Souza, and he's saying that he's uh, looking to look at, uh, buy uh, some of the tech players. For one of them is Tech Mahindra or Map My India, KPIT Tech or Tata Alexi, and this is for the longer term. Amongst all of this, which one do you think makes sense that one should look to invest over the longer term? Yeah, I think from a longer term perspective, uh, Map My India looks pretty interesting. I think uh, the company has a monopolistic position in the mapping space and competes within a global majors like Google. Uh, overall, you know, the company has maintained that uh, it continues to invest in new technologies and now it uh, also is looking at uh, 
you know providing uh, you know uh, locations via drones so obviously lot of activity is going to happen over the next say, couple of years so in case he wants to take a longer term view on a, a technology kind of uh, you know facing company then i think map my india would definitely be better i think all the other it names like you know tcs infosys can also be accumulated provided he's got at least a horizon of at least 2 years plus so uh, combining all these three i think he can definitely look forward to invest in these companies now with that we start a rapid fire round Avinash, I'm starting with you. Deepak is writing to us. 725 HFCL shares at 73 is asking for a fundamental view. Yeah, I think uh, this company is a large player in uh, you the know, telecom space. So, if you to hold on, with IT, I think he could expect better upside in the next. Okay, Manika Nandan, uh, Berger Pains bought at around 670 rupees per share. Wants to know what should he do? Continue to hold on it, to it for the longer term or look to exit given it's below the buy price? What's your take on this one, Avinash? Yeah, I think he can uh, continue to hold on. I said that, uh, you know, Berger is a very dominant player in the paint market. And I think the next second half of the 2020 should be a lot better. So continue to hold yeah, Kunal, this one's for you. TP Vinod is writing to us from Salem, Tamil Nadu, holding 120 shares of Army Organics at 975, asking for a one-year target price that he can expect. I think maybe a 1050, 1125 could be a best range uh, target price for Army Organics. We have this query coming in from Palani Appan. He's writing to us from Trichy. Uh, Everest Cantor Cylinder 500 shares bought at 141 rupees. What should you do, Kunal? You can hold on to it. Uh, I would not suggest an ad at current levels, but then possibly hold on for uh, in some more time. Kunal Sudha is writing to us. She's asking us for a comparison. Which is a better stock for short term between Deepak Fertilizers or Yasho Industries? I'm not tracking Yasho Industries, so I'll probably uh, expect Deepak Fertilizer to be a better pick. Mohammad Sarfuddin is writing to us on Mother Son Sumi. 2000 shares purchased at 84 rupees per share. He wants to hold on for the next five years. So, should he add some more at these levels? What's your take, Avinash? Yeah, I think uh, if the view is longer term, I think he can definitely look at adding it. I think definitely long term prospects are good. Right, Kunal, this one's for you. Arvind is writing to us from Kolkata. Uh, wants your view on Reddington in the short term in current levels is asking is a good time to invest or not? I would suggest to avoid. Okay, uh, mid to long term view on Amber Enterprises, is it a good time to start buying a fresh? What's your take on this one, Avinash? Yeah, I think uh, current levels definitely offer a decent support, provided you know investment billing spread to spread unstructured. Right. And with that, we're completely out of time on today's segment of Buy Now Sell Now. Many, many thanks, Kunal and Avinash. And to you too, Cheryl. Welcome back. It's always good to have you back. But don't go anywhere. Markets at noon takes the action forward. Hey, Junwala wants to go easy on trading. He does not want to trade as aggressively as he did. Let's sit. Well, I always used to. I have felt that for the last 25 years. He kya kar ho? Abhi chhod do trading mein. Wo chutti. Once a trader, always a trader. Rakesh Chunwala is a very quick decision maker. Some of our common friends tell me that you take a decision to invest millions in 10 minutes, you don't take hours, you take minutes. How does it work? You've got to catch the vital points. And second thing, remember you, you know, I want analysis paralysis. You're investing in a future which is uncertain. You cannot predict it beyond a point. That you're getting on board to clarify this entire case. What is it going to mean for the business? What else what are you looking at? This is clearly one of the biggest deals. ADT now has been getting you bit by bit.
voice that instills trust. My experience, based on what I've done in the last 20 years, these are the times where you don't panic and if you stay committed to your financial planning, you'll be rewarded. The bulls are saying, look, this is markets which are telling you that the future will be much brighter than what the... It's a day of banks as Nifty PSU Bank Index hits a four-year high. Frontline indices powers a morning gains pass against its pharma. That's uh, not fucking protect today. And it's a hit for the banks in Q2. SBI reports the highest ever profit with NII soaring to 13% on a year-on-year -year basis. SBI Q2 growth was driven by strong loan growth and lower provisioning. Meanwhile, the Bank of Baroda witnessed a sharp dip in NPAs, aiding Q2 ROAs to about 1% and robust loan growth of 19%. FMCG major Britannia munches on gain as it delivers strong performance on front line. Wadia Group company records highest quarterly revenue in Q2. Stock clocks its biggest single day gain since April 7, 2020. DV's Bharat Petroleum and uh, Coal India is all set to report Q2 numbers today. ET now will suggest muted growth for DV's laboratories on the back of weak sales. Inventory losses to drag BPCL Q2. Meanwhile, Paytm and BB Fintech also to report their Q2 numbers. It's a big victory for a democracy as the apex court upholds a 10% quota for economic, economic weaker sections of the society. The court said the reservation does not violate basic structure of constitution. Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Markets at Noon on ET Now with me, Vani Modiwala. And shortly, we'll have Sheryl D'Souza joining in with us as well. But look at what the markets are doing as of now. Sensex almost trading flattish has uh, slipped into the red. And we're seeing Sensex around the 60,950 levels. Nifty managing to still hold on to the green side. Yes, uh, as you can see on your screens, uh, trading almost near the day's lowest point, Nifty, but holding on to that 18,100 levels, uh, while the mid-cap small-cap space is actually outperforming the benchmark indices. So those are the factors that we are keeping an eye out on. But let's look at what uh, the sectors are doing today and which sectors are actually performing well. So in terms of sectorial-wise, what you're seeing doing well in trade today is uh, the PSU Bank, Nifty PSU Bank, that is rallying in trade. Nifty Metal 2 gaining in trade, while Pharma, Media and IT are the sectors that are trading in red today. Let's look at some of the individual uh, gainers in trade today. Let's not forget uh, the buzzers that we have today. And uh, Nifty PSU, obviously, the index has at a four-year high. So you have uh, stocks like SBI, uh, Indian uh, Bank, which is at a three-year high, Union Bank, which is at a two-year high coming in as well. And stocks like Bank of Maharashtra, Bank of India, Yuko Bank, Punjab Sindh Bank, all these banks have hit their 52-week high as well. Now, SBI obviously is trading and hit a record high intraday trade today. Good set of numbers, strong performance coming in by SPI, Bank of Baroda, two in focus, buzzing in trade, highest uh, jump that we've seen coming in in the stock since 2018 and obviously on the back of a good set of numbers. Moving to the FMCG side, uh, talk about Britannia trading at an all-time high. Market cap has crossed that one lakh crore market, uh, market cap as well. And a strong set of numbers is what is supporting today's move. Uh, good commentary coming in from the management as well. Marika, on the other hand, actually the stock is down most in six months. Uh, numbers were just in line with estimates. While uh, what we're seeing is uh, slower than expected growth is what the company is expecting in the second half of the year. So that is a concern coming in over there. Tattva Chintan down most in more than six months as well. Weak set of numbers coming in uh, from the company in Q2. 
Uh, Reddington, too, in focus on the back of uh, agency reports suggesting that Apple is set to trim new iPhone outputs by 3 million units as uh, demand cools off. So uh, on the back of this, we have seen some pressure coming in on Reddington as well. Uh, lastly, Raghav Productivity Enhancer in focus as Ashish Kacholia has bought 2.3 lakh shares in the company and rate gain also in focus on the back of a bulk deal. Plutus Wealth Management has uh, bought some shares in the company as well. So these are the movers and buzzers in a trade as of now. But uh, let's bring on board uh, Aditya Agrawala joining with us uh, this afternoon. A very good afternoon to you Aditya and uh, thank you so much for joining with us on Markets at Noon. Firstly, you know, how are you reading the markets? Uh, what should we be expecting in terms of the markets going forward? Uh, good afternoon, Vini, and thanks for having the show. Uh, so clearly, we are in a bit of a consolidation phase at the moment after a decent outperformance uh, from 17,100 to about 18,200. We have entered into a narrow consolidation phase. And uh, looking at the chart set of my senses, uh, this consolidation is going to go on and prolong for maybe this week as well. Again, this is a truncated week. Uh, so on the downside, uh, somewhere between 18,100 to 18,000 of the Nifty is a, a good strong uh, demand zone. And on the upside, uh, around 18,300 to about 18,350, uh, which also happens to be previous uh, peak area, uh, could act a as a hurdle and a resistance uh, as well. Uh, so going ahead, as you mentioned at the start of the show, it's, it is the mid cap and the small cap end of the market, which is doing well. Uh, my sense is the outperformance in the broader market is likely to continue this week. And while your Nifty and the bank Nifty could enter into a narrow consolidation phase and uh, stock specific.